the last one. The deadness. You know, when you live in this wonderful country, you don't know whether it's evening or afternoon. So it's wonderful blessing. If it's uh, in Africa, especially in Nigeria, where I come from, you don't need to wear wrist watches. You measure time by your shadow. So it's very, it's very simple to look at the shadow and say, good afternoon or good evening. So but when you're in a beautiful country like this, especially, I can call it summer this time around, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing from God. Um, I don't know what really happened, but I'm sure that what we are seeing today is not the original plan. But tonight, I want to give God the praises, and I want to thank you for the, all the effort you have made, because we have a very beautiful planned and biblical based teaching or theme about the cosmic conflict. Many people have asked me about this. What, what is all about this cosmic conflict? What is it going about? But I want to tell you that a cosmic struggle for control of the universe is ongoing. But before we go into our lesson, or the theme for tonight, which is battle for the throne, let us pray. <laughs> Dear Lord, we want to thank you because for us to be alive today and be breathing, even to walk and come to this place, is all the blessings that come from you. So we want to thank you. We appreciate what you've been doing and what you have done in our lives. Father, the lesson we are about to look into tonight talks about conflict. And it is a battle for throne. And we want you to speak to us. We want you to, through your Holy Spirit, to reveal to us what you have given us in both Old and the New Testament Bible. So that we will be able to understand how it began how we got involved and what is our fate because there is terror everywhere but we still question where is the hope we have in this midst of this terror we pray that you speak to us tonight through your son and your holy spirit we pray in jesus Why so much suffering? I've had that question so many times. I keep hearing it every day. Why so much suffering? People ask. Okay? You look at, this is not far-fetched. There is poverty somewhere. People have surplus. Okay? We're talking about beautiful weather we have. You have wet weather, you have dry weather. Okay? Plenty. Some people are throwing food. Why some people have nothing to eat? Okay? You have joy. You have sorrow. There is calm. And there is conflict. Okay? There is peace. As I know, there is peace in this country. But I know in Syria or in other places there is war. Okay? Some people will wake up just one morning, not only in Africa or some other part of the world, but even in developed countries like America, people will wake up and have no place to lay their head. Why? Why? The question why? Okay? It's going on everywhere. Even in countries where there is no war. Taking my country, Nigeria, as an example, and other places where there is no war. This is 
the sound you hear as time goes. But I'm going to talk about the battle for the throne, the battle for control, the battle for the throne, the battle for control. Now, light bearer. Does Bible have answer to all this? The question. How did it all begun? A God who has created the whole heaven and earth, as we have learned this week, and pronounced it good. He said, everything I have made is good. All my, everything you see was not existing. I gave command and they came to pass. And I myself, being the creator, look at them and said, it is very good. What really happened? Let us go to the Bible, the light bearer. Okay? Let us go. Please, this is Old Testament, which I often refer to the old teacher. Because in this, our series, we find out that argument people hold today about we are no longer using Old Testament, we are reading the New Testament. Even some Bibles are so small that they don't contain the Old Testament. But thank God that we find out that our first topic here was two teachers who refused to quit school. And we find out that even the New Testament says that all scripture is for our teaching. To correct us, to instruct us, and to make known to us what we don't know. So we have privilege to go to the Old Testament because if you do not read Old Testament, you will not understand how it all began. That is the reality. This is from Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12 to 14. You were the model of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Okay? At this point in time, we don't know who is referring. But he's saying that something was perfect and it was existing in God's garden. And then this particular being or the particular thing that refers to the perfect, it continues. Every precious stone adore you. You were anointed as a guiding cherub. For so I ordained you. The point here is that there is somebody, even though that being is perfect, there is somebody who said, I was the one who made you so. Okay? Let's carry on. The saga of fallen angel. Let's carry on. This is what an old prophet said. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13 and 14 says, you see, it's not only one place that are talking about this. At this point in time, we don't know who was ordained perfect. But we know that somebody said, I ordained you and I made you perfect. And every precious stone, everything I made adores you at this point in time because of your beauty. And then, for you have said, this perfection being said in his heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Please mark that word, the stars of God. Not that being star, but the star that belongs to God. And I will be like the most high. I want to tell you the point here that there is no problem if we want to be like God. Because if you want to be like God, Christ is an example. I have never, both even the Christian, the uh, Muslim, everybody talks about the life of Jesus Christ. Even in Quran, even in Bible. He lived a sinless life. He lived a life that sometimes I read in the Bible, I try to do it, but I can't. This is somebody who has come to show us who God is. So, for you to be like Christ is not a sin. But please, do not misunderstand this 
If you do not understand the first statement, you will not understand this. Because the first one said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. And then I will be like the most high God. In other words, when I exalt myself above the stars of God, then I am in charge. That is the question here. A star ready for the battle of the throne. Who is star? You may be asking. Sometimes we talk about star, star, star. These are prophets talking about the prophecy about the fall of a star. Okay, let's carry on. Let us go to the new teacher, because that may help us. The new teacher was telling us that, and war broke out in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angel fought back. I want to tell you that sometimes we talk about people fighting war, people fighting. It takes two to fight. One person cannot fight itself. I cannot say, I want to fight myself. It would be like, I'm, I'm crazy. How can you fight yourself? But if I say I fight, the next thing you will ask me is, who did you, who, with who? So, here he telling us that Michael and his, his angel fought against the dragon. At this, point, at this point in time, we don't know the dragon. And the dragon we know today is an animal. But the point here is that the dragon uh, 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 and uh, fight, um, Michael fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angel did what? Fought back because they are not letting go because there is a battle for the throne. Let's carry on. Okay? He continues. So the great dragon was cast out. He begins to tell you who is that dragon. The serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceived the whole world. Are you getting my point here? We are not answering this question. The Bible is telling us that this dragon that has angel fought back because I want to tell you something. In my country there was serious of history of cues, you know, cues, people of approved government. And one thing I learned is that before this cue happen, you have to consult some of the military division. He said, listen, there is something I want to do. And when I conquer, overthrow this government, I will make you the governor of this state. I will make you the minister of this state. I will do this for you. So, and sometimes I say, what is the reason why you want to overthrow? Because these people are corrupt. So let's get them off so that we can establish our own government and make things right. So in other words, you need to convince people who are military in order to do Q. And military takes over, next military takes over. So we find out that when your Q fails, something will happen to you. Because sometimes... In my country, you will be killed if you fail to overthrow the government. Okay? But the point here is that the Bible has made it clear that the dragon we are talking that is fighting war has, a, has his own angel. And he is the devil or Satan. That is the word we know today on our planet. We don't know Satan as a dragon. Dragon is animal. But according to the prophet, both physical, that, um, the book of uh, uh, Isaiah and Revelation, these are book of prophecy. Sometimes they use symbols and they will also explain to you what that symbol stands for. So here we now establish that the serpent, the dragon, is called the devil and Satan. Okay? And he did what? Is the one who also is deceiving the whole world. Deception is in it. Okay? Let's carry on. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. His angels, you question. How can Satan have an angel? If Ezekiel and Isaiah was telling us that this thing was made perfect until he began to think in his heart, 
If everything adores me, I'm so beautiful, then I can go one more further. Let me go above the throne of the star or the angels of God and then be like the most high. So I will be in charge of the angels and everything. Okay, let's carry on. Now, the new teacher, according to one of the gospel, Luke chapter 10, confirmed that Revelation said he was cast down, and then he was saying, I saw Satan falling like high lightning from heaven. Hmm? I saw Satan falling from heaven. This one we are talking about is the battle of throne. I want to be like Most High. I want to be worshipped. I want to be above the stars of God. So it was a battle going on in heaven. But the revelation told us that after something happened, they were cast down. And the gospel of Luke says, I saw Satan like lightning falling down from heaven. Okay? Let's carry on. Now, if you go back to Revelation chapter 12 verse 4, he says that while he was falling, or when, remember that the, the, the Bible, Revelation also said that, he, the dragon, the serpent, fought also with his own angels. So definitely, he has an angel at this point in time. And then the revelation, John the Revelator, who wrote the book of Revelation, he still swept down a third of the stars of the heaven and threw them down. In other words, when you read this, I want to interpret Bible. That's why people get confused. He thinks that it's the tail of the dragon or serpent that drew them and threw them down. He's telling you and making it very clear to you that something happened. And I gave you an illustration that perhaps there was a conviction of this star going, or this angel, going to the other angel, the angel, giving them the reason why perhaps we do not know, but that in short, if I'm in charge, I'm going to make give you this pose. So I give you reason why we should fight this person. Because if I overthrow this government, it is better government that is coming. So in other words, the Bible told us that one third of the angels created in heaven were deceived. This drawing of by the tail means deception because we know him as a being that deceives. So we will see whether that is true or not. But at this point in time, we know that he still drew one third of the angels of God. Angel God created, meaning he was able to deceive them to go and fight with God. Okay, let's carry on. You see? Now, listen to what the new teacher is saying in Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore, rejoice, O heaven, because, listen, you who dwell in them, you should rejoice in heaven. Carry on. Okay? But you in heaven, while you are rejoicing, walk to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. Carry on. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. In other words, <coughs> let me give you an example of what happened. If you look at, if you are following the world event, the rebels and the government, with some of the news we are hearing from Iran and uh, people from Lebanon or wherever, they were helping the government in Syria to take over a city or a village or a town. And whenever you win the battle, what you need to do, you tell the people who are there, it's all over. Don't panic. I will make everything go. So you rejoice. But wherever those your enemies are running to, they are in trouble. Because already he's coming there to continue what he's doing. So in other words, people who are in heaven, where the throne battle is going on, has conquered. And sorry, I need to change passion.
Don't worry, there is no war here. It's only change of battle. Okay? Yeah. So, you, in other words, I'm trying to tell you that the revelation, John Revelation in chapter 12, verse 12 says, Wow, well, you inhabitant of earth, there is a problem because something is coming down to you. Okay, let's carry on. Okay. And the same Peter, Peter made it confirmation of this truth. He said, Be sober, be vigilant. He's warning people on earth to be sober, to be vigilant, because your enemies or your adversary, the devil. So he's pointing to who is our enemy. The devil is like a roaming lion, walking or moving around, seeking who to destroy or to devour. So go to earth. Something has come to you. Okay? Remember that I said an angry general has lost the battle in heaven. So his focus, that's why I said in Syria, now they say that the focus is going back to Aleppo. That is where the rebels have run now to. So probably that city, when they start again there, something will happen to that city. That is the illustration. He's saying, because I have lost it in heaven, my target is here. This is where I'm coming. Because this is where I can build something that is left. Okay? But the question is, if it is war to earth, this is what is coming to earth. Then the question you may ask tonight, or you people may be lingering in their heart, did God create this earth mainly as a dumping of place for Satan? So after defeating, defeating him and his angels, and then he's saying war to earth because he has come down to you, then you ask the question, a God who created heaven and earth has said, wow, everything is good now has turned it to become a dumping place. That is the question you ask. Let's go further. Okay? How did we get involved in all this? We will be hearing about war, angels, God, Satan, that God created to be a perfect being. Until you begin to think to overthrow God, you know, there is war in heaven. How did we get involved? You know, for instance, you may be asking, you know, I had many people asking, how is Britain getting involved in Syria? How, why are we getting, we are, we are at peace here. What is really happening? That is the question. How do we get involved? But the, the Bible has an answer to it. If you look at Genesis chapter 3, which we will look uh, briefly, 1 to 7, it has the answer. Let's carry on. In Genesis, remember that when God created us, he created us in his own image. God did not say, let there be human beings. That is one thing we should take tonight. God said, no, I'm going to create something that looks like me. Let me create man and woman in the image of me. And let me not say, let there be human beings. He had the power to say, because he said, let, let the earth produce animals, and every different animal, including apes or monkeys that we, science are telling us that we evolved from, God spoke and they came to be. But to us, human beings, he spent time to create us because we are so precious in his sight. And after creating us, that's why sometimes I feel offended when people tell me that I came, I'm an animal, right? I, I, I was a monkey and then turned to a human being. The, the, the problem is that how can then the person be have dominion over the fish of the sea over the bed of the air and every living thing moving on the earth, including apes. So how can apes have dominion over apes? But he said, I created you, have dominion over all animals. That is the truth of our being. Let's carry on. And then something happened. I remember. Let me tell you one story. You know, sometimes we live in third world countries, especially in Africa or so. Let me use my place uh, in Nigeria. When a husband and a wife is fighting, when the husband hits the wife, the wife will turn up as he's hitting the wife, the wife will be holding the television. What happened to the television? Boom! 
So as you are beating me, I'm beating the diplomatic. If you hit me again, he's going to the radio. Go on, radio one. So he's, he's doing that because he knows, and if they want to do that, they do those things you are so dear with. Something they know you love it, you love you cherish. So if, if you beat that, then you take a bottle of schnapp that you have no value and break on. You say you can break it ten times. Be, but when you hold the television, I say, no, 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 don't do that. That's okay. I'm telling you the truth. Satan, upon all the things, when he lost the fight, he said, yes, I know where I'm going. I know who I'm going to. I'm not going to go and deceive fish or eggs. Or Let me go to that one he spent time with. Let me go to those things that in short, when he created men, well, he said, that is it. That, that is the perfect of all things. And Satan knows that the best way to get God is to go and hold that. This is it. Has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of garden? When God made Adam and Eve and gave them the instruction, he said, please, eat everything I have made. But he said this one, not all. He said, eat all, but do not eat one of these. Don't touch this tree. But when Satan came, see what he said. Did he say, you should not eat all of the things? And let me tell you the truth. This is how we call as human beings. Do not ever stand to defend God. Because God does not need to be defended. In an attempt to Satan, to, for Eve to say, listen, you have fought this war in heaven. And you are, in short, you deceive people. Let me fight you face to face. God did not say so. If you are misquoting God. But in an attempt to do that, he has opened an avenue for conversation. Are you with me? If you are kept quiet and know this person is a deceiver, why should I answer you? Go, I know you. It wouldn't have happened. But in an attempt to defend God, something begins to happen. Carry on. This is the defense. We may eat the fruit of the tree of the garden. Let's go on. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, all right? Now on place. You shall not eat, nor shall touch it, lest you do what? You die. So, in other words, he was trying to say, this is the instruction. What you are saying is a lie. You are a liar, we know you. But this is what God said. So, I told you, he knows where to get off. He knows where to get God. And then he begin it. Let, let's carry on. Now, and the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. You see that? The woman said, this is what God told us. But he said, you shall not. Forget about God. I know. I've been in heaven with him. So I know. That's why I wanted to overthrow him. But anyway, I lost it. But let me help you. Okay? Let's carry on. For God knows. This is what he's telling him. Because I know God. God himself knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like... He goes back to that issue, being like God, knowing good and evil. He begins to introduce good and evil to him. Remember that this being was perfect on, as God created Satan, Satan was perfect. But he begins to think. Sometimes people ask, how does sin originate? He originated from a perfect being called Satan. Satan. And he begins to think to be like God, to be worshipped. And now he's telling him that you will, when you eat this fruit, you will accomplish that thing I want to accomplish in heaven. You will be like God. You will know good and evil. Because that evil originated from heaven and has come down. So he's telling him that once you eat this, you will now understand what is going on. Okay? Let's carry on. Rebellion in heaven. Okay? Now, this is very important thing I want you to take tonight. 
Example how we got involved in this war taking place. If you read the book of Job, Job says, one day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. Okay? Carry on. The same in Job 2 verse 1, another day, there was a day when the Son of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. I want to tell you that let, it, let us be honest with ourselves. I don't know what you are facing through today. But before anything happens on this planet, there is dialogue, there is consult. In short, Christ said, and according to Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he said that no temptation, no te anything you are passing today that will come to you, that will overcome you, unless God gives permission. He is in charge. And he knows that whatever comes to you, he said, I will make a way of escape. He's not going to overcome you. But problem overcomes us when we do not trust God. Just like Eve. If Eve had trusted God, he wouldn't have been defending God. Sometimes we take our own knowledge to deal with our own problem. Yesterday I pointed out, God gave us 10 laws. But we have 35 million laws that haven't solved our problem. What happened to the shame he has given us? That shall not even kill. Because if all these terrorists, if they understand God's principle that they should not kill, they are not only killing themselves, but they are taking the image of God. And that is the principle of heaven. Okay? So I give you assurance today that you have the devil who is a deceiver, who is putting all sorts of questions in the heart of men to question God. But thank God tonight that but sin did God. not originate. Sin originated from a being God created because he wanted to be like most high God. But is that hope in the midst of all this trouble? Let's carry on. You see? Je Jesus made it very clear. He said, he is a liar and the father of lies. The father of it. Okay? That is how we deceive our parents. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slave to obey, you are the ones slave whom you obey. Okay? That is the word from the New Testament. Whether of sin and leading to death, or obedience leading to righteousness, there is no other way to overcome anything that is facing you today if you do not apply the principle of obedience. Because that is what has led us into this battle. In Syria, you have people, they say, if you want to fight for the rebels, you volunteer. If you want to fight for the government, you volunteer. It's about choice. Who or you obey, whosoever you want to support, you have battle going on. Let us carry on. But if you're obedient, always remember that there's rebellion here on earth. Because the Bible said, woe to earth, for the deceiver has come to you. All right? Let's go on. This is Genesis. Immediately that disobedience came, our first parents, Adam and Eve, were dropped out from that garden. Just like Satan was in the garden of God, being perfect. As he was dropped now, so we, when we disobeyed God, because Satan has caused it. And what was the result? That is why we have sorrow today. That is why we have pain today. That is why you see tears, disappointment, death, whatever you call it. All these things are involved. And that's why people ask, if God is God of love, why are we passing through all this? It was not God. And the truth remains that if God has destroyed serpents, the one third of angels that he deceived would have been wondering, who is this God? But thank God that we have the knowledge today, including the angel, that the liar and deceiver is no other person than Satan. All right? Yeah? This is the result of the war. Remember that Satan said, the day you eat this, you shall not surely die. 
You, you shall not, not listen to God. But this is what happened once they were driving out. Cain said to his brother Abel, let us go out to the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. This is when Eve and Adam realized, yes, God is saying the truth. And Satan is a liar. And God is a, this is the first people who witnessed death. They were looking. Is he not breathing anymore? There was no ambulance, no NHS, nobody to read. So he's gone. Because we have obeyed. That is the truth. I don't know how they felt. Because for us today, we see death almost every But this is the first people who were talking. Ever, ever. Oh. They now realize this is it. And that is what happened. The result of disobedience always leads to death. Okay, let's carry on. Another effect, we learned about the story of what Bible talks about, the first word that was existed. And it says in Genesis 6 verse 5, the Lord saw that the wickedness of mankind was great on the earth, and that every inclination of the thought of their heart was only evil continually. And that is what we are seeing today. People just sit down and think how they're going to hurt other people. Somebody just spending, even people coming to this country, they give them privilege to better their life. When they sit up to collect benefits, to sit down and think evil continually how to kill people. But they are not doing anybody's work. And sometimes when they do this terrorism, when it happens, people say, where is God? It wasn't God. This is the work of Satan. And God had the hope. Remember when this evil was growing in the heart of men, Bible said in Genesis 6 verse 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That is the hope you have when you trust God. When he says you are mine, terror will not come near you. Just as it did not come near Noah and his family. Let's carry on. A magnified world, magnificent world in deep trouble. Okay? The word God said, this is good, has fallen into trouble. Why God? God, why? That is the question. Let's carry on. Okay? People ask with tears. Why me? Why you? Why is it happening? Death everywhere. God, why? He goes. Question. Let's carry on. A destructive force of nature. Sometimes you open television, you see people in America just, I think this month or last, I can't remember. Somebody just, after telling to just destroy somebody's house, somebody's house, somebody who is homeless. And the following week, his own house, gone. The same thing, the same problem. Why God? Why? Destructive force of nature. This is what Matthew, the New Testament says, Matthew 13, verse 27, 28, too. So the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did you not thou so good seed in that field? That is the question. Carry on. From when then has it said? He said unto them, An enemy has done that. This is the question of things we are facing. It is not about God. Has you not said that the word you created is good and perfect? Don't worry, things that are happening. Do not question God because the enemy has sown all this for us to be asking, why God? Where are you? And that is how he was managed to defeat the angels. Because by the time we ask this question, we turn out to turn back to God because we do not understand. And that is the work of Satan. He keep on, what he continued in heaven, he's doing it today on earth. And that's why every bad thing happens to people. They do not go to the one, the enemy who sold that bad thing, they turn out to the God. But it's not, it's not a problem when you blame God. After all, he made heaven and earth. But the truth is that there is hope in this midst of terror. Okay? All troubles we have come from many enemies. So ought not this woman... Be the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has 
and think of it. For the, listen, for 18 years, the loose from be found on the Sabbath. This is one of the miracles Jesus did. He, he keep on telling us sickness. All the problem we are having is not from him. But whenever we have this problem, let us turn to God. Because he's the only one who will make us lose. Who will remove all this problem from us. But whether you have been suffering for many years, it's coming from the deceiver. It's never from God. Because God, when you turn to him, he will remove those things from you. Let's carry on. Would God destroy the rebel planet? You have had many people ask him. Uh, would God destroy this planet? You go to America, you come to even UK, there are some, even in Arab country, China, everywhere, there are some beautiful buildings, you know. One of the things I learned from 9-11, uh, somebody was looking at that, I read that during the time 9-11 happened in America, the World Trade Center. People said it was so tall, beautiful, that they thought, wow, can this ever be destroyed? People look at this planet and say it's so beautiful that I don't think it's wickedness to destroy it. But let's carry on. This is what Jeremiah 31 3 said. For I have loved you with an everlasting love. You know, when God says I have loved you, he's not deceiving you. He said the love I have for you is an everlasting. I cannot bring problem to you. But if you do not believe in me, if you believe in what Satan has sold out there, some people do not believe in the existence of God. And I was even listening to a program this morning in BBC where people were saying if rap music really leads us to God or whatever. People were debating about those things, you know. It, it, it happened that when people talk about things to discredit the existence of God, you have a louder clap. That's when, but when people talk something that Bible says is that nobody claps. So that, that is that one you're saying. And that is the work of the deceiver. People question, does God really exist? Even his things does not make sense. But the truth remains that he says, I love you with an everlasting love. And therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. He wants you to come to him. He loves you so much. His love is inseparable. But if you do not listen and believe in him, the rest are sure that is coming. The wicked one will do his work. Let's carry on. What would God do? That is the question. Okay? Genesis 3, 16, uh, Genesis 3 says, and I go. He says, this is the promise. Even though he drove our parents out from that garden, he did not say you go away without hope. There was hope in the midst of that terror. Because he said, I love you with an everlasting love. And this is what he says. He says that I will send somebody who will come and crush this deceiver. And but in attempt to crush this deceiver, he has power. This deceiver will bruise the heel of that savior. Let's carry on. Okay? And we know about it. He says, Revelation 12, 5 says, And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was snatched away and taken to God and to his throne, the battle of throne. This son that we born, will be born, he will crush the serpent's head, but he will be taken up to the throne of God for a while then. Okay, let's carry on. When this seed of promise in Genesis 3 came, remember that we said there is a problem. When you look at Jesus himself, I don't know what you are passing today. Whatever problem you are facing today, if you look at Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 11, Jesus faced all sorts of temptation from the deceiver who even quotes the Bible because he has been there in heaven. But head on, he did not spare Jesus. Okay? He faced him with temptation. Let's carry on because of time. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that 
which was not. He's telling us that the mission of Jesus, who came to this earth, is to save those who are lost. Right from our father that we are broken from Eden. Okay? That is his mission. And then, the deciding victory. We see about the cross. We read about the cross. In some places, you are not allowed to wear the cross. But that is not the victory. The victory is what he has done. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out again. So the battle of earth is going on. But Jesus promised that the same way joy came to heaven, joy is already on earth. And he said, and I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. This is the battle. He said this is to indicate what? The death that is going to die. He was saying all this thing. When I die, people who believe in me will overcome the deceiver. Because I will come and I will draw that deceiver out, just as I did in heaven. Let's carry on. He's no longer on the cross. Even if you see symbol today, where he still is still there, he has gone. An empty cross has proven he has overcome. That is it. For God did not send his son into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That is the purpose. He did not come to condemn us. Whatever thing you are doing today, Jesus is not there to condemn you. He is there seeking to save you. Let's carry on. All right? In as much then as the chick, as the children, has partakers of the flesh and blood, he himself likewise shed in the same. All your suffering is not new. He partakes in your suffering. Let's carry on. <clears throat> that through death he might destroy him. Him is Satan who has the power of death. That is the devil. Okay? That is the, what the victory has brought to us. Carry on. Surely they may forget yet. I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you in the palm of my hand. This is what Jesus has done. When we talk about his death, it's about the victory that he has brought to us. Let's carry on. This is it. John 19, 30 says, he says, it is finished. The battle, the war, the battle for the throne is finished. And then, he gave up the ghost. That is what Jesus said. When you hear the word is finished, all your trouble, all your sorrows, everything you are facing is finished. Okay? Hope in the midst of terror. When he says it's finished, he was giving hope even there was terror on them. Carry on. Matthew says, an angel of the Lord Descended from heaven, his countenance was like lightning. Okay? Let's carry on. And his clothes, as white as snow, the angel answered. Let's see. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of terror. Do not be afraid of war or anything you are facing today. He is not here, for he is risen. This is the hope we have. That Savior who died, is risen. Okay, let's carry on. And truly, an empty tomb has proven. An empty tomb is an evidence. Up to this day, you will see it where he was laid. It's an empty tomb. And he has risen. Let's carry on. For we do not, this is what thing I want you to go home with. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. People slap you today, you slap them back. It's not people who slapping you. It is the deceiver who walks through human beings to hurt others. We are fighting against principalities and power. You cannot finish the battle if you do not trust in God who has made you. All right? Against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. 
Remember, I told you, the battle is not physical. It's ongoing, but you need to trust somebody. Let's see who you trust. Carry on. Heaven rescue plan. Okay? Now, I saw heaven open, and behold, this is the hope we have in Revelation. And behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he judged and made war. Okay, carry on. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him. Carry on. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Not the King of Jews, but the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's see the last slide. Who side do you want to be? I don't know. The side you want to be, the deceiver has lost the battle in heaven and already he has lost it on earth. His days are numbered. He's deceiving people to doubt the existence of God. That's why when you hear certain questions from certain people, we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. Satan is using people to deceive people. He's using people to fight people. He's using people to carry terrorism. They do not know what they are doing. But the truth is that you need to make a choice. Either you go to the coming king of kings, or you go to the deceiver who has deceived one third of the angel and deceiving the whole earth about the existence of God. It is your choice tonight. I ask you, on whose side do you want to belong? If you want to belong to somebody who has declared victory in the midst of terrors we see on earth, can I see you stand up? If you want to join the victory that are coming, can I see you stand up? If you are still doubting or have some questions, do not worry. The king has an answer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because you have made it known that the suffering we are facing on earth is not your handwork. You have made it very clear how he originated from Satan that you created perfect. And he has seen us because you love us with an everlasting love. And that's why he did not look for anything to deceive, but to us that you love. But you made a promise of sending a seed that will crush the rebellious Satan on earth. And that has happened. Empty cross has shown us, empty tomb has proven that victory is certain. So, Lord, we have stood up this evening to show you that by your grace we are on your, on your side because you are coming to finish the war. May you spare us and give us that gift of everlasting life. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.